All right, today is following on from trying to increase your anterior core strength and control for someone who's got a bit of a hypolytic back, you know, the anterior pelvic tilt that some people get. So what I'm gonna work on is how to progress from like a knee float through to a tabletop through to a dead bug. Now, a lot of people are doing dead bugs straight off the bat, but if you're someone who's a bit sort of curvy in the lower back and you've got this sort of protruding abdomen and a bit of an anterior tilt, then this one's for you because if you can start right back at the basics and get your control and your form right, then the dead bug at the end is actually going to work for you. So what I suggest you do is work on your knee float first, and I'll go through that quickly and then we'll go through your tabletop and how to add on and progress forward. Because if you add on low to the dead bug and you lose your form, it's pointless. So what I suggest you do is work on your knee float and your lower back position here. All right, so the knee float is simply that, right? And we're gonna do tabletop, which is this one, all right? And then what you've got to think about is making sure that this whole spinal section here doesn't move, all right? So you don't want this movement when you raise your leg, because that's the movement you're doing when you're in anterior pelvic tilt, okay? So we don't want this sort of position here because it protrudes out and it puts your abdominals in a sort of non-efficient position to create core control, okay? Or core strength, you know, trying to get that stability there. So you want neutral spine and a flat tummy, not an arched spine and a rounded tummy. That's pointless. So first thing you gotta think about, always work on can I keep neutral spine and don't advance it unless I can. So best way to sort of measure or monitor what you're doing, put your hand just a little bit under your back. So I'm just talking about not all the way where your hands would meet. I'm talking about sort of halfway. So half of halfway if you like. So not towards the spine, but half halfway. So you can keep your spine neutral. Now if you go neutral, that back should be touching your hand. So your back should be just touching, not pushing on it, just touching your hand. You're monitoring here, when I do my movements, okay, does my back stay on my hand or arch off my hand? All right, obviously I want you to stay on your hand, but also don't want you to go and push it on your hand. Otherwise you're sort of compensating too much, you're trying too hard. So the hand's just there as a measure, all right? It's there to sort of monitor what you're doing. Now, first one, if you watch my core videos on how to activate transversals, go look at those. Okay, but what I suggest you do is draw on that pelvic floor here to get a bit of tightness activated, get your TA working. Then you brace down a bit, trying to keep your ribs sort of down towards your pubic bone and your ASIS, so the front of your pelvis. So you don't want your ribs flaring out like that. So you've got to try and draw those down so then you brace through here, just at a low level. So it's sort of flat, taut like a sort of tight trampoline, braced, and pulled down through here, all right? But you should still be able to breathe. If you're going like this and you can't breathe, okay, it means that you're trying too hard, all right? So your best thing to do, pelvic floor on, and then just draw down a bit. Now, once you've got that, that's got to stay on. This is the key about all these exercises right through to the dead bug, is that's got to stay on through here, okay? And you've got to breathe. So if you can't work that out, like I said, go see my breathing videos if you like. Hold that on and then you're going to put, keep one leg on the ground, float one leg up, all right? You should be able to maintain that, all right? Keep your breathing normal. Pressure shouldn't change on your hand. Now, here's the trick. I have to raise my left leg to get into, into a dead bug position. So once I've got this position, I need to then go draw on a little bit more, no holding the breath, float the other leg off. Now you notice, this didn't change, okay? So this is how what would happen if I did this wrong. If I did this wrong, I'd bring one leg up and then the other leg would go and launch me that way. Okay, so that's, if you see that happening, if you see in the mirror that your back does that, you go into an anterior tilt or a low dosis position and the pressure comes off your hand, you know you've lost your control, all right? So up into here, make sure that's no loss of control of the spine now, even just holding it there is going to be hard. So what I suggest you do is work on trying to tap down and then come back up. So you're constantly holding this position here, 
And this is actually going to give you a bit of hip flexor strength. So remember, people who are got anterior tilt or hypolordotic back are going to have weak hip flexors. So working on this tabletop position is a really good idea to build up some isometric endurance in those hip flexors as well, just by holding my knees in this position. So keeping that on here, dropping one down, tapping the floor, bringing back up, learning how to just not move that spine. Keep the pressure the same on my hand the whole time as you go through maybe 10 taps on each leg, going through maybe 20 of those, and you'll feel the fatigue coming through your hip flexors. That's a good thing. Okay, that means you're actually working hard and trying to build up some strength, and it's a sign that you're weak in there. All right, so if you can build up some strength, great. If you get a bit tight, stretch it out. All right, so there's your tabletop taps. That's the sort of lower body component of the dead bug. Now the version of the dead bug that we do with the band pull is maybe a little bit different than what you've seen, but it's one of the best ones to work on the control as well as the strength. A lot of people just work on strength and they try and really focus on the fatigue in their abdominals, but they're not working on the position or the control of their spine, which is what you need if you're one of those anterior tilt hyperdotic people. So if you've nailed, second part, if you've nailed this, Table time, okay, you've nailed that. The next thing you've got to try and do is take this hand away and put it up in the ear, because you're going to be ready for a band pull in a moment. So the second stage would be, from hand here, take this hand away, all right? Get your spine set, bring this leg up, bring your second leg up, then you bring your hands up into here. All right, so as you lower down, it's a little bit harder. There's more demand because my hands are not stabilizing on the ground now. I can't put pressure through the ground to stabilize myself. I have to use my tummy. I have to use my core, and it's a little bit harder with the control. Now, this is just prepping you up, ready for some load through your hands. Okay, so you're just trying to work on, can I keep stable through there, all right? So that wouldn't take you too long. Maybe a couple of sessions on that before you get ready for this. Now, this is a mini loop band, right? Mini power band. That's probably all you need to start with because that's enough tension. All you need to do is work out how far away from the fixed object you are to increase the load, okay? So what I suggest you do is come down a little bit and this band will be wide with your hands as well. The load here is going to really challenge your strength and your ability to get endurance and keep the control in your lower back, all right? So before you pull on this, set your tabletop up first in your lower body, part of your body, then you add on the load here. So start again, where's your neutral spine? You can put your hand on there to sort of check it first. Okay, I got it. Then you bring one leg up, keep that switched on through here, keep your breathing, bring your other leg up, hold it there. Then two hands in here, and how much load you pull on here is how much you can handle. So you keep the load on there, and then you work on down and up. So this is still pretty, not beginner, but intermediate sort of work. It does challenge you a bit more. You should still be able to breathe. You can see I'm still talking so I can breathe. I'm, I can feel that's working a bit, okay? It's challenging me in my anterior core, but I'm not pulling too hard on the band. If you overcook it, you're just going to lose your form or your back's going to start hurting. And if you put too much strain through the front, guess what's going to happen? You're going to start straining the back because the load will be too much through your lower back. If you put too much load here, it's going to be too much load because you'll be start pulling you out of position. As soon as you go out of position with load, it's going to load your lower back and that's like pointless. So make sure you don't get too greedy with the tension here and load this up too much. All right? Otherwise, you're going to start running into problems. And the other thing too is just start with tabletop taps. There's no point putting leg all the way out just yet. Just work on your tapping part and your load here. When you get good at this, what you can do is instead of just tapping it, you can extend the load of the leg. So you can hold that flat and then work out how far down. Then you'll start getting a shake like that and bring it back, all right? So one leg out, one leg up, and back. Then you're getting some serious 
lower abdominal work as well as the upper abdominal work. And you can see I can shake with that because it brings on the load through abdominals. Now it's okay to start fatigue and get some shake there as long. Like I said, don't lose the form, don't feel the load in your back, and work on endurance, okay? So people say, how many sets and reps? Well, work on endurance until fatigue and fatigue without losing control. That's how long you do it for, okay? Now if, that, if you find that you just keep going and going and going, you need to maybe advance the band strength or go into that leg lowering. So there's your dead back. I know that's a long one, but it's really important that you try and work on those progressions and tick the box on each of those ones rather than just launching straight into something that's fancy pants or it's really, really difficult to try and get the abdominal strength and the look here. You're after control, you're after postural endurance, okay, and you're after great positions, then you build the strength around it. See you there, guys. See you next time.